What's up guys, it's Track, and we're here with another early review of a sweet, sweet Dark Zone Blaster. And this is the Adventure Force V-Twin. Now, this reminds me a lot of like the spiritual successor to the Scorpion, which is a former Adventure Force Blaster that I don't think is still on shelves anymore. It might still be on some shelves, but uh, it was a really cool Gatling gun style blaster that had a lot of sweet contests associated with it. I just really liked that blaster. This does even more than that though, whereas that looked like a Gatling blaster and had a chain belt feed like a Gatling blaster. This rotates. It's, uh, it's I guess you would call these like barrels. Um, through now it's firing through a hole in the center but the spinning action on here is really cool now it holds 30 in the chain and then 30 on these things these are stationary dart holders they just you can pull and kind of load from them each the left and right one holds about 15 uh, darts for 30 in the in, in reserve and then another 30 on the chain itself. The chain would be easy to break up and expand, but given how it kind of seems to be designed to sit on here compactly, I think that you should really just stick with a singular chain. So uh, thrilled that Dart Zone's doing this. We have an actual rev trigger and then a firing trigger. Of course, there is a safety in between uh, and then a top carry handle. Now I've long uh, said that I don't like blasters like this for me personally, but at this price, I can let it go. I can juggernaut wield this thing. It's also small enough that as opposed to a lot of juggernaut blasters we've had in the past, this is, this is a serious like contender for a smaller nerfer, somebody younger who wants high performance and a chain gun can still use uh, something sweet like this. So uh, the only other innovations that I want to talk about is normally there's like a kind of clunky like ratcheting. It'll ratchet through the chain and then push through like it. I can't even do it with my arms. It's a multi-step process that leads to some jams. This is interesting because they're using a different pusher style system here. You can see that underneath the chain is where this locks in and moves through. But if you look at all these holes on the chain and you're like, what are those for? Well, there's a rubberized spinning wheel up here that acts as a micro sort of conveyor belt. And when I say micro, I mean itty bitty. Uh, it digs into the dart and throws the darts into the flywheels, which my buddy Brian Hoffer has confirmed that uh, is a standard kind of dart zone style flywheel cage. If you want to tighten that up, the flywheels are okay and the cage geometry is quite simple. So we'll go ahead and slap that back down. Again, you see this lines up with this chamber here to throw the darts forward. Uh, this appears to be kind of an indexer that fits into here to lock everything in. And then the uh, retention mech is just a simple spring detent up here. You can be as casual or as uh, tough with that as you want to be. It seems pretty durable to me. Six batteries in the back means that it's got four to power, what I'm assuming is the flywheel circuit, uh, and then another two, I think, powering some of these cosmetics, like moving the chain through and then rotating this front bit. But we'll fire it a couple of times for you inside. And you can see that I only have a few darts uh, in my uh, chain right now because uh, mine is a prototype. I was having some small difficulty with darts next to one another. I think that I'm not getting enough hang time on my pusher uh, as opposed to how long it needs to, to push them in. So I think a simple voltage mod for my prototype is gonna fix that, but I know a couple of people who have production models of this blaster and it was at uh, End War uh, and it was doing just fine there. So overall really sweet. Uh, the performance we'll figure out for you when we take it outside, but if you're noticing a little lag time, in some of these shots. Well, that was significantly smoother. We got another one coming up here. See, that's what I'm talking about. That one uh, just slipped. Not a big deal. It's a high rate of fire Gatling gun, but it's ultra sweet. It's pretty compact, which again is good for small nerfers. The price is right for something with this much aesthetic. And while I'm still inside before I get you those sweet, sweet FPS readings that we care so, so much about, I just want to mention that like the, the action on it, the fact that it does even without darts fully loaded into its belt is actually kind of a feature in and of itself. Uh, if we learned anything from Zuru blasters over the last couple of years, it's that 
Uh, kids and honestly like nerfers alike really like having an almost fidget spinner-esque element to their play. No darts required, you're out of darts, you can bluff having darts, or you can just pretend that you're Rambo. Like using blasters as props is something that we're really familiar with uh, on YouTube as a platform because we use blasters as props for fun things all the time. But uh, using them for props just as an element of play is also really, really cool. Let's take it outside, see how it performs. All right guys, so we're outside, we've got the chronograph. We're hoping that we can get some good data for you. The rate of fire is really one of the most attractive things about this blaster when it's not being kind of funky and fickle. We might modify it later on on my Twitch, I have no idea, like this is an excellent candidate for some, some hacking and such, but uh, I did want to point out, if you want to use it as a one hand wieldable blaster, this whole thing comes off. I just thought that was really cool. It's like a fitted piece, uh, dedicated rail. This lets you use it kind of like the juggernaut, I guess. And it's, since it's so small, it's not very heavy. Uh, it's really easy to operate in that form and fashion. So let's go ahead. I guess you could also, if you wanted to, you could death the kid it this way. Now it kind of looks like a the scorpion from from Spider Man. I don't know. Anyway, just just a fun feature uh, if you have really strong pinkies for your trigger finger. But let's go ahead and put a couple over the chronograph. See what we got. That's only 64, 77, 79, 78, 74, 76. Uh, so it looks to be mid 70s, which is very uh, in line with elite-esque performance. Again, there are ways to tweak this thing's uh, cage if that's your jam. Uh, get a little bit higher performance out of it, but at 30 bucks, uh, it's a weird blaster in terms of ergonomics, but I'm trying not to hold that against it because I know it's just a personal preference. It's not really my jam. <laughs> I missed the chronograph with all of those because I was trying to aim through the blaster, which might be the only other downside of ergonomics like this is you're really in point and kind of click uh, sort of territory, but overall, a really interesting blaster, very unique, very cool, and I really dig that it's got this spinning barrel action. I think that that's a nice feature for people who uh, run out of darts. Not that you should run out of darts soon with this. It comes with plenty of darts and has onboard storage for many, many more. Plus, like, they're Adventure Force starts. They're cheap as heck to get more of them. Uh, anyway, that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you'd like to check this one out, it's not an affiliate link, but it is a trackable link in the description box down below, which is why it's all bit ly. I would love it if you would check this one out. I think it's a an exclusive, and I'll you'll know what exclusive it is when you click on it in the description box. Uh, since it's Adventure Force, I think that means it has to be a Walmart exclusive. So link down in the description box below. As always, much love. Blast on, Drek out.